Okay, SmackDown, July 1st, 2011. Now, I can go on about all the matches and how they were to me and everything. The matches themselves weren't so bad, despite Sin Cara's, you know, first botch um, at one of his wrestling moves. But there is one thing that I noticed throughout the entire show. Crybabies. Tons and tons of crybabies. Well, not so many tons, but just three. It's just to the point where the whole crybaby thing is starting to become extremely played out. But for some reason, the WD insists on doing this. Let me go to the first crybaby of the night. Now, the one thing I do like about SmackDown is they didn't start with a really long promo about, you know, how I'm going to beat this guy or how I'm going to beat that guy or whatever. It started off with the Mark Henry and, um, and Randy Orton championship match, which is what I like. It started off with that. It started off with a bang. The only jacked up part about it is at the end, Mark Henry, like, give the guy a pacifier. He became the biggest crybaby after losing to where that... Not only did he destroy the audio equipment, he tossed the audio he, he tossed the audio attendant like a freaking rag doll over the edge and he just woof, like he was nothing. Just just tossed him over the edge. Just sitting there saying, I should've won that. I should've won that. Come on, man. I mean he's supposed to be a monster here and he's gonna sit there and, and, and whine and moan about losing. Come on. That, just, that was really disappointing. I mean, the fact that he was ran the whole time, beating the crap out of people, okay, yeah, you were trying to promote him as a monster. But now, the way he's, like, beating up the so-called innocent people, non-wrestlers, is ridiculous. It's making him seem like a crybaby, and I'm ready for anyone to bring out an enormous pacifier to shove it in his mouth. All right. The next crybaby that I've noticed that that doesn't really make any sense to me and and that's um Rage Insane. And I probably pronounced his name wrong, Ranj Insane. But he was talking about how Jinder Mahal was like a monster and how he was pretty much dominating the family and that's why the great Kali ended up turning heel because he's married to his sister and that he threatened to divorce his sister and humiliate his family if you know if he didn't, you know, listen to him and go by his side. Okay. I know that they're Indian, and I know that they have they have a, a distinct culture, but for crying out loud, do you really have to go that route? I mean, come on, that's I'm not gonna say it's stereotypical. Okay, yes, it is stereotypical, and it's completely obvious to go that route. But they could have picked a better route, and then Rand just saying, saying he's the monster, he's the monster. That's why he wishes that he was my brother. He was the great colleague. Come on, man. I mean, the great Kali was awesome. He is the best monster I've ever seen, and they have turned him into nothing. They they have humiliated him by him wearing a freaking tutu like the Tooth Fairy, which really bothered me when they did that, because he should be a monster. He should play a monster, not have these ridiculous kiss cams, not wear a freaking tutu for the rock. He should be a monster. And I'm going to be real. He is probably better than Kane. He is better than Kane. He can probably take Kane out. And I would love to see those two go at it. But I doubt that they're going to do that now because they are promoting Jinder Mahal. All right. My third crybaby of the night that really got on my nerves, that really bothered me the most, was Christian. Christian has charisma. Christian has a character that can go both ways. Christian is a character that is multifaceted. And what did they do? They turned him into a crybaby begging for matches when he's been winning time after time after time after time. And I, I hate to say it, as much as I don't like Michael Cole, I agree with him. He has fought every match and won. There's probably a few that he didn't win. But when he said, if you don't win this match, you don't get a title shot. And he wins the match, but still don't get a title shot. And Taylor Long is like, title shot, title shot. Oh, I'm going to take it. Title shot, title shot. Oh, no, sorry. Title shot, title shot. I mean, he's like dangling it over his head to where he's like a little dog or a little child. Like, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, come on. He fought and he won. 
and still they are dangling this thing over his head. And they keep trying to push this thing along, but it's to the point where people are going to get tired of it. And I'm not going to lie, I heard some cheers for Christian. I heard some cheers for Christian last night. And maybe there's a little tweaking for people making booze or whatever, but it's to the point where I really do believe that there are some people out there that still cheer for him because they see that he got screwed. He got screwed royally, and it wasn't for five days. It was for two, and they need to be straight with that. And there's also one thing I've also noticed. After CM Punk's rat, uh, rant on Raw, it seems to me that he kind of sparked a fire under everybody in the WWE, both brands, to where they got to be real about everything. Like, JTG was keeping it real about how he felt and how he felt like he wasn't getting a shot on, on, um, on Superstars. And then Christian up and said that, you know, that there's no way you're going to lose, Randy, because you're SmackDown's golden boy. It seems that after what CM Punk did, he literally lit a fire under every wrestler there. And every wrestler that had frustrations is coming out on the air. So Vince McMahon definitely has his hands full because after CM Punk, what he did on Raw, oh man, everybody's going to come out and say how they feel. There's going to probably be a few that's going to stay quiet, divas. But there's still going to be a lot of wrestlers out there that's going to say how they feel regardless of how they feel. And, and, and um, Mark Henry said the same thing the night of the rant. He's like, what you going to do, fire me? For real. Everybody and every wrestler is getting fed up by not having airtime. I wouldn't be surprised if Zack Ryder just makes uh, an appearance, an impromptu appearance saying, hey, I'm not getting screen time. I'm tired of being on the internet. Here I am. What you going to do? What? I'm waiting for that to happen. I really am. This big man better get his facts straight and he better get his things together because there's going to be a lot of angry wrestlers that's coming after him and they're going to pull a CM Punk. Because even if CM Punk is going to leave July 17th, do you really think that this is going to end? No. It's not going to end at all. It's going to get worse for Vince. But great for us. Because I'm not going to lie. I would love to see more wrestlers come out there and say how they really feel. Instead of things being all scripted and stuff like that. It's ridiculous. But as for SmackDown in itself. The matches weren't so bad. <sighs> Cody Rhodes... As much as I am really impressed by his improvement and how he's kind of influencing Ted DiBiase, his voice really trips me out. I don't know whether or not it's the mask that makes him nasal or just the fact that he has that lisp. It's just, it's just comical. It's to the point where the mask thing is getting played out. I know his face play has healed by now. And it's just time to take it off. It's time to take it off, but still keep that whole mentality of I'm, you know, of maybe not be dashing Cody Rhodes, but still remain that heel. Just like Kane with the invisible scars. I think that it's time to take the mask off and it's time for his character to go in a different direction. As for Ted DiBiase, I really feel bad for him because it's like he comes from a family of legends and his dad has done double better than what he's doing now. Oh, my gosh. He can't even keep Maurice, and he even lost a million-dollar belt and still hasn't recovered it. It's pretty sad. He's been losing matches right and left. But I think that Ted DiBiase needs to be promoted instead of downgraded like he has been all the time. Well, the overall review, I'm going to give my, my overall score for SmackDown. I don't know. I got to give it a C-. And the reason why I say C- is because the freaking crybabies. I mean, come on. They need to take their characters in a different direction than going back to how it was. I mean, the crybaby thing used to work in the 80s. But it doesn't work anymore. They need to evolve. There's a lot more to a heel than just being a crybaby and demanding a match. And it's been proven many times before. From the frustrated face, which I consider to be a perfect heel or a go-between and then there are some heels that gets the point across without whining but I don't know I am hoping that the WWE somehow gets a hold of this well probably not a hold of this they're probably going to ignore it but they get the idea that there's a they, they need to take their wrestlers in a different direction and they need to take their wrestlers in a whole different plane for the competition because TNA even though TNA is in somewhat of a slump right now TNA is going to come up and be the best competition they ever had. I doubt it's going to be like Monday Night Wars, 
But honestly, they need to step up their game because there's always going to be somebody behind them. Well, anyway, this is the Nature Girl 30 here. Just letting you know that I will see you on Monday. And you take care.